Retired, refired, teachers in prayer. Brothers and sisters, retirement as we know it today appears to be a concept that has its roots in industrialization. And it has, however, assumed cultural significance. Um, it seems to be entirely a human concept used to regulate the workforce and profit making. You know, as I do, when you enter a profession, you're paid at the basic point of a pay scale and that the older you get, the more expensive you become to the employer. However, research has shown that when people in the age range 60 to 75 are more adaptable, they're wiser, they have a deeper understanding of things. In fact, they're more flexible, they're quick to make sound judgments and so on and so forth. However, because of the cultural um, um, concepts that are associated with the word retirement, some of us enter this period of our, of our lives with misgivings and fear and trepidation, and we think about how we're going to be lonely. We experience, we, we are afraid of experiencing lack of fellowship and friendships and, and finances, and some of us have become completely disoriented. And as I said, this is not surprising because this concept of retirement is what it is. It is human-made and it flies in the face of the word of God. Yes, the word points to age limits, three score years and 10, and we see, you know, 80 and 90, and we see in the Old Testament where many lived into great ages. Um, and, and the Lord promised an extension by reason of strength. The word also, yes, does speak of our frailty and failings of the body and gray hair and dimmed eyes when the older we get. But it does not speak of retirement as a principle to be applied to everyone. But you know, brothers and sisters, the, uh, the elders amongst us, it is how you have been schooled in the word of God that will determine your attitude to aging and old age. I must tell you that I looked forward to this, um, th this retirement period in inverted commas. I used to say to my family and friends, I look forward to being retired because I am going to be, I, in fact, I asked the Lord to make me a woman of wisdom, a wise old woman. And I said, I wanted to be in ministry. I wanted to be praying and fasting and, and you know, just, just getting into the word of God. And, you know, whatever else the Lord has in store for me, I say I am ready. And I'll tell you a little story about my sister, my elder sister who uh, was a teacher when she was, she was also in ministry, in ministry with her husband for years. And when they were about to retire, she whispered something to herself at a meeting where she said, God, you know, sister, me old. You know, sister, me old. And out of the congregation from the back of the room came a sister who the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to and, and, and told her, went straight up to her and said to her, stop saying you're old. The Lord will use you. Stop saying that you are old. So sometimes, you know, when we are getting up in age, we it's a sort of complete, blood you know, say, me old, me can't do this, me can't do that. And me no know, me not so sure, mighty God. Uh, but listen to me now. Um, the word of God is replete with promises and, and wonderful things about um, those with gray hair. Proverbs 16, 31 says, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Praise God. There are many young people who talk about 25 as being old. Uh, my God, and we have to pray for them because they clearly are not inheritors of the promise of God. Um, Proverbs 20, 29 says, the glory of young men is their strength. Gray hair, the splendor of the old. Yes, indeed. Ah, mighty God. I, 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 I just love visiting 
older people because when I go visiting them and pray to pray with them, they are such source of encouragement. They will tell you about their past, what the Lord has done and how God is still their God. And they will tell you like Isaiah, the Lord speaking to Isaiah over the, the children of Israel, Isaiah 46, 4, 5, even until your old age, I am the one and I will carry you even until your gray hairs come. Hallelujah. It is I who have created and I who will carry and it is I who will bear and save. Praise the Lord. To whom will you compare me, count me equal or liken me so that I may be compared? This is God's promise to those who are getting up in age. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. So as I said, it does not, this thing about retirement does not appear, hallelujah, to be a general scriptural principle. And, and um, Bishop Dr. Uh, um, uh, Roderick Hewitt is a theologian, can tell you, he will tell you. Uh, but from my reading and my little research, um, it's not a scriptural principle to be applied to everyone. When we search the scripture, we only see one direct reference to retirement in scripture. Get your, get your Bibles, brothers and sisters. And I'm reading from the Berean text, Numbers 8, 26. 4 to 26. Now, regarding a descendant of Levi, who is 25 years and above, he is to enter work in the service at the appointed place of meeting, but starting at 50 years of age, he is to retire from service and is no longer to work. He may minister to his brothers at the tent of meeting by keeping watch, but he's not to engage in service. This is how you are to act with respect to the obligations of the descendants of Levi. So in other, in other texts, it, it speaks about the, 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 um, the, the Levitical, the priesthood, when they come to the age of 50, not just to keep watch, but they were to coach and mentor and support the younger ones. Hallelujah. When you recall that the Levites, Levites would have had a range of jobs to perform, from inspection of animals and produce for the sacrifices, to offering sacrifices of various sorts, to inspecting humans for different forms of skin diseases, inspecting their dwelling places for infectious diseases, to lifting and moving the tabernacle around, and the list goes on. So I expect that some of these that, um, Levites would have been pretty tired and would have done a fantastic job of work. But note, the scripture does not say that they should cease working and go, and go on a holiday and or engage entirely in leisure activities. They were to assist the younger priests. They were to keep watch. They were the ones on surveillance to make sure that the younger ones are doing it right. They were to mentor them and coach them, as I said earlier. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, when I score the, the, the word of God, I see a whole heap of old people. Praise God who God decides to use for his glory and for his honor. Hallelujah. Abraham was very old. He was um, in his nearly 90 or something, nearly 100 years old when God spoke to him and said, Sarah, who was also an old woman, 90 years old, would bear a child. And, you know, funnily enough, the word, there are three laughs in, in that part of scripture, Genesis 17 through to 21. Abraham laughed. When he thought, God, you're, you're ridiculous, <laughs> but you're God all the same. Sarah laughed when she heard that she would be the mother of the child of promise, uh, mighty God. Um, and, and again, she might, must have said, God, you, you will do a ridiculous thing like that? Huh? You will? Will you? And then when Isaac was born, her laughter was one of happiness. She said, God hath made me to laugh, hallelujah, so that all that hear will laugh with me. 
Praise God. Come on now. Some older people who are on this line who have never, who have stopped laughing. And by the way, laughter is biblical. Laughter is good for our bones. Glory to God. So yes, man, if you want to be refired, you need to laugh at the promises of God as you accept them and embrace them. Praise the Lord. Moses was 80 years old when he was called to ministry. Yes. Moses had misgivings and he had a lot of excuses. I can't speak. I'm fearful. I will not go unless you go with me. I don't know. Um, da, 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 da. And some of us, it, when we get older, it seems as if some of the capacities that the Lord um, has given us, we, we put them aside. We forget that God had given us talents and abilities. And we say, I am old. Me too old for that. Ah, oh, my God, my God. The other day I was at fasting and one of the older ladies came and we, we were singing a chorus and I did not know that she was a dancer but just out of just out of nowhere she just rose up and started to dance to the music and I said my 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 look at that yes sometimes you must you and I must get up not forget to me all is too Hallelujah. Glory to God. In fact, I must tell you that the other day a child asked me, Auntie, how old are you? And I said, um, 60, um, I mean, I try to calculate it, you know, and I said, 67. And then they said, no, it cannot be. I'm not 67. I'm 68. And this year I'm going to be 69. Oh, my goodness. Hey, glory to God. But then I don't bother to worry myself about my age. I just Focus on what God wants me to do. I feel fired up for the Lord. Glory to God. Miriam was six years older than Moses. And so when she led the people in singing and dancing and playing her tambourine, she was not a, 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 a chicken. She was an old fowl, as we say. She was not lamb. She was well tough, praise God, thank God for some women, some older women on this platform and some older men on this platform who will rise up in singing and dancing and playing your tambourine because of the goodness of God, hallelujah, and because he's firing you up for service. Glory to God. You must have a testimony. Hallelujah. You must be able to say, look what the Lord has done. We as older women and men must be able to say to the younger people, look here, when I was your age or when I was a young woman, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord made a promise to me and I can tell you that he's kept his promise. Glory to God. Let me talk. Let me go on. Uh, Caleb was about 80 years old when he declared, give me the mountain. <laughs> he asked for a vantage point position, a place where he could do some surveillance work. Yes. Where do you want the Lord to place you? Ask him to. Ask him to place you at a vantage point. Hallelujah. And that vantage point is to be used to bring honor and glory to his name. We need some older people in on in the education system. Are you not seeing what is going on in the education system? Right now, as I'm speaking to you, they have something on all angles talking about the violence in schools and how I heard a little trailer yesterday about how one um, dean of discipline was stoned and, and, and had his foot broken. Come on, teachers of God, women of God, who have taught and understand the system. It's not time for us to relax and stretch out and eat and, and, and put up with foot and say, look how, me, look, look how God bless me. And I, I'm now at a place where I can just relax. It's not time for relaxation, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I recall, as I said before, saying um, the, to the Lord, I would like to be a wise old woman, giving sound and wise advice. Numbers, I think, 14, 16 or 16, 14 said, the Lord heard the mutterings of the people of Israel and he acted upon those mutterings. And just as I, just like how I muttered to the Lord, I muttered to myself, 
that, Lord, I would like and mutter to the Lord and say, Lord, when I grow up, I want to be so and so. Thanks be to God. I have found myself in a place where people can call me, younger teachers can call me, principals can call me. Some people who are still in the Ministry of Education don't know what which way to go can call me and say, what do you think of so and so? And my God, I have I've always said, Lord, may I have the imprimatur of the Holy Spirit on whatever advice, whatever I say, whatever I do in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the book of Ruth, we see this older woman, Naomi, who seemed to have lost everything, but was able to pick herself up, even though she called herself Mara. And she decided to walk those 38 miles back to Bethlehem, Judah, accompanied by a daughter-in-law. Some of you, uh, some of us, some of us, some of us, need to have those daughters-in-law, uh, those daughters and sons-in-law. Uh, my God, whom we influence. This is an age of influencers. Uh, and we need to influence young teachers and young educators, younger teachers and younger educators for to, the, to, to understand the way of God and the word of God and how, hallelujah, he, they can apply the word to their daily lives. In so much that Ruth, when, when Ruth was, when Naomi was leaving, uh, this Moabitish woman said, look here, nobody tell me to leave you. Don't tell me not to go with you. She said, I will go with you. I will follow after your God. Your God would be my God, your people, my people. Clearly, Naomi had deposited something in Ruth that she felt, um, Ruth felt, was worth holding on to. And we see this older woman um, clearly coaching her. In the, had, had she clearly coached her in the ways of God and her people and prepared her to marry Boaz. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We see a couple in the New Testament in Luke 1, Elizabeth and Zechariah. The word of God says that they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. But guess what? The Lord would have it that just as he moved into Sarah's condition, he moved into Elizabeth's condition so that she could give birth to John. Hallelujah. The one who came. Uh, glory to God as the way maker for the, the Christ. Ah, we thank you, Jesus, that there are some older women and some older men who will be impregnated by the word of God and that they will conceive and bear fruit at this time, uh, even though they are very old. In the name of Jesus, we come this evening, you know, against the briars and the thorns. I was reading from Mark 4 today, the sower and the seeds. And what struck me is that the, so the, the seeds fell on some, some grounds, which means that, that, that were not good, which means that people actually accepted the word. But because one in verse, I think it's 20, it says that the cares of life, the thorns and the briars came up and choked, verse 19, choked their man. And so they couldn't, um, they couldn't bear fruit. But look here, the word of God says that even in old age, we will and can bear fruit. Come on, fire up yourself, older people. Praise the Lord. And then we go to Anna. You know, I like this Anna. Anna in Luke 2, 36 to 38, she was a prophetess. And the word of God says, of a great age. And not only that, she was a widow of 84 years. Where was she found? She was not at home. Um, I do a little thing and I sorry for herself and I said, I don't know if it do. And my husband dead and her and this, that and the other and I can't and I don't know. 
Where do, where do we find her? We find her in the temple serving God with fasting and prayers night and day. Come on, some of us older people. Come on, Pauline. Come on, Roderick. You, we need to, to be, and I know some of you are still, at, still working and still doing what you know the Lord wants you to do. But we need some people. Ah, mighty God, who are sold out for the Lord. Look here, Jamaica is in a bad place, you know, and on and on, 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 see. And if some of us older people don't stand up and say, no, we are going to die. We're going to wither and die. Mighty God. But this evening, I'm here to encourage you. Uh, like, um, let me tell you, we go now, just go Quickly over to Titus chapter 2, 2 to 3, and 4 to 5. Uh, firstly, it's a message for both older men and women. Come on, older men. You're supposed to be sober, serious, sensible, and sound in faith, love, and endurance. Some of us too giddy. That's why we cannot be fired up for the Lord. We're not serious, and, and we're not doing the sensible thing. What is it sensible? What is it that the Lord requires of us that is clearly sensible? Some of us can't dance again, can't, can't do this again, can't run up hilltops and mountains while some of us can. But what is it that is sensible and serious and sober that the Lord is calling you to do? Are you, are you and I sound in faith? Older women, we're called to show reverence for God by our behavior, not to be gossiped. Look here, and a long time we are talk. Ladies, we love to talk, and it is a good thing. We love to talk. It is good for us because by talking, we get rid of some of the things, the toxins and the problems when we share the ideas. But look here, we must, it's not gossip, we must gossip. Stop the gossiping. Let us, let us talk scripture. Let us talk the promises of God. Let us prophesy over our children, our younger colleagues in, in the workplace, uh, the word of God. We might not even see them. We can call them. And rather than talking about um, Miss so-and-so and what she's not doing, talk about how God was good to you and is good to you. Talk about how he has blessed you. Talk about how his promises are yea and amen. Talk about how by praying, hallelujah, you've been getting closer and closer to God. Because in truth and in fact, Many of us, while we were working, we just have, we just going from one thing to another to another, and and the time to spend in scripture and the time to spend in fasting and prayer was rather limited. But now we have the opportunity not to gossip it out. Um, and some, you know, some of us like a little alcohol, the rum cream, and the Baileys and so on. But it, it says we mustn't be addicted to alcohol, but we must be examples of goodness in the name of Jesus. Fire up yourselves, older people. Let us fire up ourselves by the word of God. Let us fire up, let us be on fire uh, through the, the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And then I'm um, going back to the same ideal as we see in 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 um in in the Old Testament, uh, the, the 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 younger women are to be taught by the older women, teaching them how to be sober, how to to respect and love their husbands and their children, how to be discreet, um, how to um keep their homes and housekeeping is not and people online might say but that is anybody can do housekeeping that is true but women we know how to make things run and run well how to keep our husbands and our children and how to make the pennies stretch yes man and we're supposed to be good and 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 obedient and that the word of god and listen this is important the reason why we are told as older women and men to teach the younger men and women is so that the word of God will not be blasphemed. The word of God will stand as sure and yea and amen. There will be no question about the, the veracity of the word of God because of the teaching that we have given to the younger men and women. 
Hallelujah. And just to continue, just to encourage us, we, 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 um, just right now, I'm, I'm coming down. I, I take you to Joshua 13, 1 to 3. The word of God says, when Joshua had grown old, having lived many years, the Lord told him, you are old and have lived many years, but much of the land still remains to be possessed. I'm like, wow. Although Joshua was one of the spies, who came back with the news about the, the possibility. Yes, yeah, man, the land is flourishing and many challenges there, but we can take the land. And here, the Lord is speaking to Joshua and say, look here, you think you're done? You just have come. He said, there is much land still remains to be possessed. This territory remains. And he lists them out, all of the Philistine regions, including the Gersherite, Holdings from Shehor, east of Egypt, as far as the border of Ekron on the north, which is considered part of Canaan. And this includes the five rulers of the Philistines, the Gazites, the Ashdodites, the Ashkenazites, the Gittites, the Ekronites, and the Avites. Now, interesting, because when you go into reading about the five kings who inhabited those five, five holdings. It's a very interesting story. So I said to myself, is it possible that the Lord might just be calling you and I to possess the parts of the land that still remains to be possessed? Take a good look brothers and sisters, at what the Lord is calling us to do. Survey your land. Now, your land may be your family. Your land may be the school from which you have retired or the, the institution from which you have retired. Your land could be your church. Your land could be your community. The word of God too. Joshua said, take control, man. Take control of the rulers of the land. To the extent that these five rulers had to be destroyed, there may very well be things in our lands that must be destroyed so that God can get the glory. So I ask you, and I ask myself, what is the Lord calling us to destroy from our land, our school rooms, our churches, our own lives? Have we even begun to understand that there are spiritual strategies that God has for us? that will enable us to divide the enemy, conquer the enemy, and rule over him? Yes, ma'am. Because the word of God to Joshua, he actually told him what to do. These five kings were, were sort of incarcerated in a, in a cave. They could not, they could move. And God had told Joshua how to take the lands bit by bit. Right? Don't do it all at once. Take this part and then you take that. Fight this one and then you fight that. Look here. The enemy, the enemy of our souls is there for the taking, brothers and sisters. But we don't do it through our own means. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you know who and what your five kings represents. And you know which cave the kings are in. And this evening we can depend on the Holy Spirit to tell us how to seal them up in the name of Jesus and how to destroy them. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are called to move forward in discipline, courage, and hope. This was the, the, the title for our church year call to move forward in discipline, courage, and hope. And I call each of us to do the same. And we can do this because God has not forsaken us. We have time now, more than ever before, to declare the power of God to this generation and to speak about God's might to the next generation.
and to glorify God, to speak about his righteous deeds as the psalmist did in Psalm 71. And I end with Psalm 71, five to nine, for you are my hope, Lord God, my security since I was young. I depended on you since birth when you brought me from my mother's womb. I praise you continuously. I have become an example to many that are my strong refuge, that you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and your splendor daily. Don't throw me away when I am old. Do not abandon me when my strength fails. And we are assured this evening that the promises of the Lord are yea and amen.